there has been almost one degree Celsius of warming since pre-industrial times, and this is causing glaciers to retreat, ice caps to melt and sea levels to rise. Moreover, there is evidence that this warming is increasing the frequency and intensity of droughts, floods, crop failures, of fires and storms right across the globe. How do we adapt to such rapid environmental change? How do we thrive in the face of these challenges? And how do we adapt and thrive in such a way that slows further change? In many parts of the world, the dominant approach to dealing with the hazards of climate change has been static engineered interventions such as sea walls, wells and irrigation infrastructure. These can be very expensive, but very effective, at least in the short term. However, in many situations, nature can provide a more affordable long-term solution. Humans have harnessed nature to buffer the impacts of climate variability for millennia, but it is only recently that evidence and awareness has grown that the restoration and protection of nature can not only safeguard biodiversity, but also help people adapt to the effects of climate change. Moreover, by absorbing and storing carbon, these nature-based solutions can slow further warming on a global scale. So let's now take a specific example. Coastal habitats, such as coral reefs, seagrass meadows, and mangrove forests protect coastlines from the damaging effect of wave erosion and tropical storms. They slow the intrusion of salt water that can damage crops and livestock. They safeguard biodiversity and provide a wide range of ecosystem services. In other words, they protect and support communities in the face of climate change. Moreover, healthy mangroves absorb and store large amounts of carbon. However, when these ecosystems are damaged or destroyed, for example when mangroves are converted to shrimp farms, when overfishing, boats and bleaching damages coral reefs, communities are exposed to the full fury of storms and sea level rise. They lose their property and their crops, and they have fewer natural resources to support alternative livelihoods. An engineered solution to the problem of degraded or destroyed coral reefs is to place concrete balls reinforced with microcilia in the waters to allow photosynthesis and planktonic life to regenerate in degraded areas. While effective in regulating the action of waves and reducing damage to coastlines, biological diversity is very low around concrete and the balls do not provide any other benefits to society. The nature-based alternative is to manage and restore the ecosystem and maintain biological richness. A teeming reef provides habitat, spawning and nursery grounds for economically important fish species. It can provide jobs and income to local economies from fishing, from recreation and tourism. It is also a vital source of medicine and has great cultural value. And of course, the high genetic diversity it harbours gives future generations many options. Now, the restoration of coral reefs is just one example of a nature-based solution to climate change. Others include agroforestry to stabilise crop yields in drier, more variable climates, and forest restoration and river catchments to secure water supplies and protect communities from flooding, erosion and landslides. And as with the reefs, restoring nature in this way also protects vital life support systems and slows the rate of change. It increases our well-being and makes us resilient and adaptive in a rapidly changing world. Ultimately, nature is our closest ally in the fight against the causes and the consequences of climate change, and we can only develop sustainably by taking its full value into account. 
So let us work together to make sure that nature is central to decision making in business and in government for the benefit of people and planet. 